breakfast today, I'm going to make meatloaf stuffed with mashed potato, gravy, and peas. Um, Hi, it's me too, coming to you live from my kitchen. And today I'm going to try to make Liz's stuffed meatloaf. Or at least my take on it. We'll see. Starting out with one pound of 93.7 uh, ground round and a pound of ground pork. I figure the pork has enough fat in it for all of us. And to that we add three slices worth of ground up oyster crackers. And since I have no oyster crackers, I'm using breadcrumbs. Some amount. I'll try that much. Maybe that much. This is all an experiment. To that, we will add one egg. One cup of milk. And a teaspoon or so of uh, ground mustard. Whatever looks good. Some sage. And some dehydrated minced onions. Not that much. Salt and pepper to taste. And of course some slap your mama. Meatloaf has to have it. A little more salt. One to two tablespoons of ketchup, or that much. A heaping tablespoon of Worcestershire. That's pretty heaped. And a couple of cloves of garlic. Which I haven't minced up yet. Down here. Okay, more than a couple. Garlic is necessity. Just coarsely dice. over here. Mm, yum. Good enough. Into the mix. Now, is that everything? Double checking my cheat sheet. Now we get messy. Move Liz out of the way over here. 
and start mushing all of this together. too moist. It means you have to clean your hands off and add some more breadcrumbs. And when it's about the consistency that you want, that's about right. Now we assemble the whole mess. I'm starting out, of course, we start by making a roux. I'm starting with a about a quarter of a cup of bacon grease. from the bacon that I fried up, which is going into the meatloaf. Add an equal amount, another quarter of a cup, of flour. Since this is going into a meatloaf, I may just leave it a little on the thick side like this. So we'll just let it sit there and simmer for a little while and do other things. Heavily spray a regular loaf pan. Because you know this is going to want to stick. We want to put about two-thirds of this, saving a third of it for a top. And we'll make a trough in the middle of it, form it up on the sides of the pan. suppose you have to be all that neat about it, unless you want to. Ideally you want the sides high enough so that hopefully the mashed potatoes and gravy will not overflow and make a total mess of things. You don't want any holes in it either. Don't want that gravy leaking out. I think that looks pretty good. Now for my take on it, I'm doing what another viewer did, and she said it worked well to keep it from leaking. I'm putting the gravy on the bottom. A 
oven's ready. Now the fun part. Putting the mashed taters on top of that. Like Liz said, if this is a total failure, it still can't be a failure. It might turn into a total mess, but it has to taste good. I think this might actually work. It's theoretically, the gravy is now sealed in. We have it entombed. And now, because I want to, Crumble up some bacon on top of the taters, which is what I cooked up to get the bacon grease for the gravy. This can't possibly be anything but yum. Mm. One for me. I know, stop playing with it. Now we get to figure out how to make a lid for it. It, we figure out how to get it on there. Alrighty. I'll try to seal it. <laughs> this is right. This is so going to overflow. I think that looks just lovely. We'll see what happens when we put it in the oven. I'm putting it onto a baking sheet and verifying oven temperature is at about 375, depending on where I point this thing. which is where I want it to be. Set this puppy in there. And let it go for, according to Liz, an hour and 10 minutes. We'll be back periodically to see what it looks like. Somebody asked, so yes, these are for more than decoration. Left to right, salt, cornmeal, breadcrumbs, bread flour, all-purpose flour, whole wheat flour, medium noodles, brown rice, 
long grain white rice, and sugar. So there. And they're out where I don't have to go hunting for them. At the 45 minute mark, it's looking nice and bubbly. It smells great. But it hasn't made a total disaster of itself yet. I don't see any gravy leaking out. Yet. At 70 minutes, it's looking pretty done to me. I still hadn't made a mess. I'm going to take this puppy out. Oh yes, up here in the light of day, it's looking real nice. But since I forgot to put the peas in, because I forgot to put the peas on my list, I'm winging it. Let's saute some fresh vegetables. Added a little celery seed, a little basil, and just a touch of salt. A little squirt of lemon juice. Get back in there. Give them a few minutes and they'll be ready. And now, let's see if we can get this thing out of here. What are the odds? I think I could have used a better approach. Well, that was probably not the best way to do it, but it still looks pretty darn good plate this stuff up. Shut up, timer. Alrighty, it actually looks almost civilized. Served up with some fresh veggies, with its built-in gravy. Just a nice light tomato on the side with some mushrooms, portobellos, a little vinaigrette, and a whole lot of feta cheese. Yum. Do excuse me.